In part one, we discussed the recent buzz in the mainstream following the disclosure of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program. I tried not to make any conclusions as to why this disclosure was happening, but I think it's quite clear that this whole situation reeks of bullshit. There's aliens. No, there's no aliens. There's aliens. There's no aliens. That's racist. <laughs> Some rabbit holes are deeper than others, and the UFO subject has to be one of the worst. You could research UFOs for your entire life and never find the bottom of it. With all of the disinformation, hoaxes, and conflicting stories floating around, it's impossible to make sense of it all. And perhaps that's by design. There's probably about 80% of false information being presented and about 20% of factual information. Uh, unfortunately, the UFO community doesn't know which is which. Back in the early 80s, it was my job to confuse the UFO community. Doty had this wonderful way to sell it. I'm with the government, you cooperate with us, and I'm going to tell you what the government really knows about UFOs. Or maybe it's all lies. Who even knows at this point? This, however, does not seem to deter the UFO community in the least. Its members have an insatiable hunger for the truth. And this is a quality that is really easy to manipulate. It can be really hard to discern between honest ufologists and people trying to make money off of the gullible UFO community. This brings us to Tom DeLong, founding member of Blink-182 and longtime UFO advocate. At the end of 2017, DeLong founded a new company named To The Stars Academy, which he claims will help usher in a new age for humanity by building futuristic UFO-style technology. In this video, I will dissect the purpose and intentions of To The Stars Academy. Wow, boss! It sounds like this is gonna be a really cool video! What the hell? What are you doing here? Aw, oh, don't be like that. We're buddies. No, I mean, aren't you supposed to be lost out in space somewhere right now? Well, technically, yes. But now that I'm here, I brought you a gift. An exclusive shaving kit from Dollar Shave Club. Are you kidding me? Are you f***ing kidding me right now? You're breaking continuity for an advertisement? Yes. Is it any good? You bet your sweet ass it is! Wow! Do you want to look good but hate leaving your house and prefer to rot behind a computer in a dark room debunking YouTube videos for the rest of your miserable life? I know I do! I gotta tell you, I'm getting really frustrated with the absolute cluster f the shaving aisle has turned into. There's just too many choices and ridiculous products. Every year they come up with a new useless gimmick trying to trick you into spending your hard-earned cash on overpriced crap, but then they make the cheap stuff too cheap. It's like scraping steel wool on your face. It's gotten to the point where I don't even want to use razors anymore. I've just been grabbing the closest sharp object I can find and doing it old school. Holy sh**. This is stupid. What if I told you that there's a way to get a perfect, precise, affordable shave without having to leave your house and go out into the scary, uncertain world where you'll probably get stabbed and die alone in a ditch somewhere? Join Dollar Shave Club, a monthly subscription box service to help you control that pesky neck beard and make grooming a whole lot easier. For a limited time, Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their shit shower shave starter set to new members for only $5. This starter set features their executive rate and trial size versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean. In the first box, you'll receive their body wash, shave butter, executive razor, and butt wipes. I did it. Baby, good job! The leading brand would charge you out the ass for all of this. The best part is, you'll be getting their executive razor, which includes a premium weighty handle and a full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. You all know that I love my beard and take it very seriously. The executive razor is amazing. The extra blade on the back is perfect for getting the edges just right. This offer is exclusively available at dollarshaveclub.com slash skeptic. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash skeptic. The link is in the description. By using this URL, you will help to support my channel. I'd really like to thank Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. It's not often that creators in my genre get this opportunity, so it's really cool that they take this chance with me, especially since the whole adpocalypse thing. And now, back to the aliens.
As I demonstrated in our last video, the UFO footage we were shown in the news did not prove that there are alien spacecraft in our skies. As impressive and convincing as the footage was, we would have to eliminate the much more reasonable possibilities first. Also, the funding for the UFO threat program was cut off in 2012, which demonstrates at very least that the Pentagon does not recognize UFOs as an outside threat and likely considers the entire program pointless. I mean, if this was the best that they could come up with after spending $22 million, I'm betting that the program was ridiculed as pseudoscientific nonsense. But according to the New York Times, the Advanced Aerial Threat Program is still in operation, even after the funding was cut. Is this even true? Or is someone using smoke and mirrors to convince us that aliens and UFOs are real? The most prominent figure featured during the recent UFO news cycle was the former head of the now-defunded UFO Threat Program program, Louis Elizondo. Elizondo currently works for To The Stars Academy, owned and operated by punk rocker and world's oldest 10-year-old, Tom DeLonge. DeLonge is a longtime fanatic of UFOs, aliens, and all manner of conspiracy theories. The secret architecture of our nation's capital. The whole thing's set up. It's all creepy. It's weird. I have the JFK assassination book, the CIA, and the mob killed. One of the best presidents of all time. Tom has done countless interviews and made many television appearances advocating for the existence of UFOs. In 2016, DeLong released a book, Secret Machines Chasing Shadows, along with an accompanying four-song EP, which basically serves as an advertisement for the book. From the imagination of Tom DeLong and written by New York Times best-selling author A.J. Hartley, the book describes the U.S. government's back engineering and construction of advanced UFO technology. And though it is a fiction, DeLong claims that the subject matter is very much real. Tom claims that he's not allowed to name any names, but he told Rolling Stone magazine that he was authorized to say he used sources within the Department of Defense and NASA. Anyone with half a brain would dismiss a story like that as a fantastic lie, but to everyone's amazement, during a WikiLeak dump of John Podesta's emails, it was revealed that not only was Tom telling the truth about having had contact with government and military insiders, his book was apparently of some interest to the White House, even if indirectly. In this email, DeLong informs Podesta that his book will be released soon and teases that Podesta has some sort of a presence in the story. Story. John Podesta forwarded Tom's email to then White House Communications Director Jennifer Palmieri with the caption, Our Secret Plan. Obviously, Podesta's being tongue-in-cheek here, but what exactly is the joke? Is the joke that it's not really a secret? Or is Podesta mocking DeLong, implying that he's a gullible rube? The WikiLeak also reveals names of insiders that DeLong was supposedly talking to, including Rob Weiss of Skunk Works, which has operations in Area 51, including the testing of top-secret aircraft, Major General William N. McCasland, commander of USAF Research Laboratory, which was involved in UFO research until the 1970s, and Major General Michael Carey, special assistant to the commander of Air Force Space Command at Peterson Air Force Base. Then in February of 2017, Tom DeLong was awarded UFO Researcher of the Year, the highest honor given by the International UFO Congress, which is like the Oscars of UFO conferences. Tom accepted the award, with the video. I'm Tom DeLong, and I want to say uh, thank you for acknowledging uh, some of the hard work I've been putting into uh, some subject matter that concerns us all and that you're passionate about uh, just like I. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a serious UFO researcher here. There are people who have dedicated their entire lives to researching UFOs, spent thousands or even perhaps millions of dollars on equipment, expeditions, samples, tests, licenses, multiple degrees and PhDs. They become integral members of the UFO community, garnered the respect and admiration of their peers, and had books and papers published, and this punk rock star comes along, has inside information dropped in his 
fucking lap. He's gifted the highest award the community has to offer, and he can't even bother to come to the goddamn conference to accept the award? To add insult to injury, Tom's demeanor in this video makes it appear as if he does not take this award seriously. He arrogantly and presumptuously acts like an accomplished ufologist, a god amongst them that knows everything that they all wish they knew, a true insider who's earned his position at the top. There's a lot that I can't say, um, but there's some that I can. And uh, I'm so appreciative that I've been acknowledged for this stuff, but I'm not done. I kind of used some of my notoriety um, to try and do something pretty ambitious and it worked. And spends most of the video trying to relate to everyone and convince them that he's one of them. I'm just like you guys. I've spent 20 years up all night reading about Roswell, Dulce, Serpo, uh, Churchill, the crashes here, Nazis building craft there, and Antarctica, and what's on Mars, and what's on the back of the moon, and structures, and anomalous this and that. I mean, I've done it all. I know it all. I read all the same authors as you guys, hundreds of books. I look at all the same sites. I listen to all the coast to coast stuff that you guys do. I'm the same. Which really just serves to highlight exactly how detached Tom really is from the rest of the UFO community. He wouldn't even need to say any of this if it was true. This finally brings us to the infamous live stream where DeLong, along with four former members of the CIA, NSA, and Department of Defense, along with one current member of the CIA, announced the inception of To The Stars Academy. In this live stream, they explain that UFOs and UFO technology are very real and they represent a bright new future for humanity. Tom, again, comes across as aloof, detached, and immature. Elizondo speaks of his experience with UFOs as director of the Advanced Unidentified Aerial Threat Program. I ran a sensitive aerospace threat identification program focusing on unidentified aerial technologies. It was in this position I learned that the phenomena is indeed real. Bull Shit. This guy, this fucking guy, in every interview he does, does this believe me, it's true face, and it pisses me off every time. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. Elizondo was interviewed later about his connection to DeLong's company. You would assume that he left the UFO threat program because it was defunded, but apparently he left well after that. Did he leave to join Tom's company? My decision to leave the US government was before I ever knew anything about To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. Uh, my initial plan was to frankly fade off into the sunset, uh, take a job working something that uh, I could enjoy that was completely unrelated to the U.S. government. It was actually the To the Stars Academy of Arts and Science that found me. Um, through some colleagues of mine in, in the intelligence community, uh, once they found out that I was leaving, uh, had suggested that um, maybe I should talk to some of the folks uh, at To the Stars who were interested in, in talking to me. There it is again. I'm sorry. I know that this isn't scientific, but I just don't trust this guy. Now don't get me wrong, Elizondo has a really honorable philosophy behind his research of the subject, trying to stay as objective as possible. I would say remain skeptical. Healthy skepticism is very important. I think you should always question uh, all the information that uh, comes before you by anybody who says anything. But something's really not right here. Although what these gentlemen are saying may be factually accurate, there's a used car salesman quality to the way they're trying to sell this information to us. They're trying to get us to buy into something bigger than just UFOs are real. We have a plan to bring the unimaginable, the stuff of dreams, to the world. And I would like you to help us push humanity over an invisible boundary that seems to confine us, forcing us to make the same mistakes over and over again. Casting our eyes skyward again, to the stars is a constructive and unifying proposition for mankind at a time of growing disarray. We're offering you the opportunity to be on the ground floor 
of building the future. They want us to buy into some shit about humanity in the future. Of course they're trying to get you to invest money in their company, I, I get that. But they've yet to demonstrate that UFOs even exist. They just tease us with the idea that they do, and promise to trickle feed you proof a little bit at a time in exchange for your money. Yeah, yeah, these are true American heroes. Oh, and speaking of which, To The Stars Academy has released a new UFO video since I released part one. Let's look at that for a second. Yep, that's it. Something goes really fast in a straight line, they barely manage to capture it on the tracking camera, and they say that they don't know what it is. Woo! We sure don't have anything on Earth that can do that. Do, do you even need me to debunk this? Not long after the live stream, DeLong went on the Joe Rogan experience to plug to the Stars Academy, and it was a train wreck. The entire time, Joe looks exhausted. Like, it's physically taxing to him to have to put up with such obvious bullshit. DeLong shows Rogan the fakest f***ing UFO videos I've ever seen in my life. Okay, this is the engine. They turn it on. So right now, they're, ac they're accessing that energy I told you about. Now, mm -hmm. and watch what happens. It's gone. There's a pilot in that. If that was in a movie, I'd want my money back. <laughs> He uses already debunked evidence proposed by known liar Bob Lazar. He claimed the energy source was an element that was very heavy, and it was like on a pentium or something like that, 115. And then literally three years ago, maybe four, they added it to the periodic table. Yeah, any idiot that took chemistry class could predict the discovery of elements. I mean, we all know that each of them incrementally have higher numbers, but 115 is not a stable isotope. It decays after only a split second. You can't use it to power things. And the most frustrating part was every time Rogan asks a hard question and tries to get DeLong to present something concrete, Tom just squirms uncomfortably in his chair and makes excuses for not having any real answers. This is in the hands of the U.S. government? Let me, uh, I think, no, no, I see, I don't want to get into that kind of stuff, but um, the people you're surrounded by are telling you this? Is that what it is? Uh, well, I, I don't want to get into that, but... I almost couldn't get through this interview. I hate this kind of evasive crap. So what is happening? Why this campaign to convince us that UFOs are real, that they're a threat, and that the U.S. government has been building them for over a decade? If the government wanted us to know this was a real issue, wouldn't they head some kind of disclosure program? Wouldn't they be the ones telling us this is some kind of a global threat? Why does it take a private company headed by a punk rocker to educate the world on this topic? Clearly something dishonest is happening here. But what exactly is the deception? Is To The Stars Academy a front to launder money to the now defunded UFO threat program? Is Tom DeLonge a gullible moron that's being used to push a CIA disinfo campaign? And these men are just keeping Tom in line? Did you ever think maybe this guy's bullshitting you? Or he's a crazy oh, person? No. no. Some of these theories actually have some weight, but I suspect that it's something much less romantic. I think it has to do with this. Uh, oh, no, wait, not, not this. I mean this. Like millions of these. Look, I get it. We all gotta eat. We live in the internet age where people are willing to give away money for all sorts of goods and services and entertainment. But what I don't like is things like Kickstarter. Because those platforms allow people to solicit donations in exchange for promises. And that is extremely easy to abuse. But at least Kickstarter requires proof that the product is even possible or actually in production. Tom DeLonge won't even give us proof. He just links us to his website where you can invest. And apparently they already have two and a half million dollars in investments. So where is this money going? If we go by what we're told in the live stream, you would assume that it's going to be used to research and build UFOs and even disclose aliens. But according to the website and the balance sheet, there's no such mandate in the company. And according to Tom, no disclosure is planned. When we do what's called confirmation, not 
disclosure, confirmation. It doesn't even make any sense that a bunch of established military and intelligence insiders would quit their six-figure jobs and risk prison by breaking their secrecy oaths to join some rock star's totally wicked company for cool, awesome punk people. Then what the hell even is this company going to do? To the Stars Academy is a publicly traded company, which means all of their financial information is public. There, we can see that To The Stars Academy is registered as a film and media production company. That's it. Film and media. In fact, To The Stars Academy is actually the parent company of an older company called To The Stars Incorporated. How does that work? Well, strap in folks because you're going to witness a real disclosure here. DeLong boasted on the Joe Rogan experience about his affinity for creating companies. I had a company that incubated a lot of small startups like software and apparel and hardcore skate surf companies and stuff like that. Well, I learned a lot from that and I pulled out an entertainment startup called To The Stars. Now, maybe he did make all these companies as a way to produce and distribute different forms of media and merchandise. It looks as if To The Stars Incorporated mainly serves as a merch store for everything Tom DeLong. This appears to be Tom's real baby. If you look at Corporation Wiki, you can see that Tom is associated with 15 different corporations. The thing that ties most of them together is that these are LLCs, limited liability companies. This means Tom can get the tax advantages of sole proprietorship while protected from any risks, like the risk of bankruptcy, lawsuits, loss. It appears as if Tom just frivolously creates these companies by the shitposty nature of some of their names. One of them is called Poo Poo Butt Incorporated. Tell, tell me he takes that, that f***ing company seriously. To the Stars Incorporated was owned by Archive West Investments, of which Tom DeLong is listed as a manager. The sole proprietor of Archive West Investments is the DeLong Family Trust, which technically means Tom owns it. To the Stars Incorporated hit a rough patch in 2016 where they took a net loss of $422,000, citing a drop of music sales as their main cause. Instead of producing better music, music, like a good band might do, To The Stars Incorporated stated that the company will have to raise additional capital through debt and or equity transactions to move forward in the future. And that's what they did. The owner of To The Stars Incorporated, Archive West, sold their debt by giving all of their shares to Gravity Holdings LLC. Gravity Holdings LLC is also owned by the DeLong Family Trust. Gravity Holdings LLC then sold their debt by giving all of the shares for To The Stars Incorporated to To The Stars Academy in exchange for 55 million shares of To The Stars Academy, which means To The Stars Academy has over $400,000 in debt and then got the UFO community and his fans to pay that debt off. And all he had to do was put together a a fancy presentation promising to disclose aliens and build magic carpets or some shit. And to make it look legit, he hired a panel of established government intelligence and military insiders who told fancy stories about shit that they saw in the sky. And it worked. And as a side note, To The Stars Incorporated also owes Our Two Dogs Incorporated $400,000 for a loan. They even list the repayment of that loan in their fund allocation as one of the uses for their proceeds. On the website, they sell their shares for five bucks a pop and demand a minimum of $200 from each investor. Aw, Canadians can't invest? Aw, shucks. Guess I'm out of luck, folks. But this still leaves some loose ends. Why would these established gentlemen lend their names to something so dishonest? What is their incentive? Sure, this might be part of some disinfo campaign designed to trick the American public into weaponizing space, something the military has been trying to do since Reagan's day. Hell, Reagan even used some of the same damn talking points. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Again, I think it's something much simpler. 
money. To the Stars Academy indicates the par value of their shares at one tenth of a penny. To the Stars Academy itself reserves the right to sell as many shares to whomever they want for one tenth of a penny in the future, even when the value goes up. The actual value of the shares started at one third of a penny, but he's making you pay five dollars per share. Basically, the friends only deal gives insiders the ability to turn pennies into dollars on the backs of other investors. This process removes the middleman and democratizes access to equity ownership. Tom also gets a guaranteed payout of $100,000 per year, but obviously To The Stars Academy will have to do something to justify its existence in the future. DeLong has to keep convincing people to invest, otherwise this structure isn't self-sustaining. Why don't we let Tom explain what this company will actually do? My end goal is to build a company that changes the world. And by doing a traditional IPO in the next five to seven years, and to do that, I grabbed very, very high ranking people from various areas in the government to achieve all this stuff. And they, they don't need to come in on the movies. I have that on lock, that's my thing. But it can, it can function as a way to help people understand what the f is going on. So some of the movies, some of the TV series, some of the nonfiction works that we do will all be about that subject, but the rest of it won't be. They're gonna make fancy movies that makes it look like shit is happening, all the while feeding the hungry investors with little crumbs, just tidbits of information, like these videos of F-A-18 aircrew swearing and looking at dots going in straight lines. That's it. No disclosure, no UFOs. But does DeLong really believe in UFOs? Is he being lied to? As soon as I got this confirmation, that he has these 10 high level witnesses and all these people are involved and I'm thinking, I've seen this before. In fact, I've seen this many times before. Everybody always said Bill Moore hoaxed all this sort of stuff. Bill Moore may have been taken for a ride, but Bill Moore wasn't lying. He did have the sources, just like Tom DeLong. He, they were feeding him this material. The somebody comes to you and say, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you and I'm your friend. And they all have one thing, a number of things in common. The number one thing they have is they have massive egos. And that's how they hook them. The guy says, I'm whatever, whatever, from off at Air Force Base, Office of Naval Intelligence. You're the only guy that knows what you're talking about. And Bill says, yeah, that's true. And that's how they hook him. And it's the same thing. He's got to get permission every time he wants to talk about something. He uh, can't reproduce their material. And they told him, we're going to give you information and we're going to give you disinformation. And it's up to you to figure out which is which. Mm -hmm. and, and separate the wheat from the chaff. And of course, if you're an egotistical guy, you're going to say, Oh, I can do that, no problem. And that's a mistake that Bill Moore made. So when you, when you talk to Tom DeLong and say, oh, you're being used. No, 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 I'm not being used. No, no, I, I, these guys are my friends. Bill Moore will say the same thing. Uh, that actually sounds terrible. If you give people some truth and hide it in a big lie, that's the exact same thing as just giving them a lie. If the information is muddled, then it's useless information. Paul Benowitz a self-made man, a very successful businessman, was systematically driven insane, wound up in an insane asylum, under treatment for a long time, lost his business, had to turn it over to his family, and was destroyed by the efforts of Richard Doty. It was unfortunate what happened to Mr. Benowitz, but they were supposed to protect something and they did their job. We kind of planted the seed in Paul that what he was seeing and what he was hearing and what he was collecting was in fact probably maybe UFOs. Whether or not Tom DeLong really believes this shit is a moot point. If he's lying, he's scamming us. If he thinks he's telling the truth but is repeating lies, he's lying. Both ways he's lying to us. But all this doesn't mean that UFOs aren't real, right? I still think that there's probably something going on in our skies. Maybe DeLong really knows the truth despite the layers of deception. Maybe the government really does build UFOs at Area 51. Maybe to the Stars Academy really will reveal the existence of aliens and UFO technology to the world and usher in a new age for humanity. Yeah, and, and maybe People Magazine will name me Sexiest Man Alive. <laughs> uh, I'm 
so done with this. But what about the whistleblowers and the spacecraft that Tom mentioned? I was paid by the Department of Naval Intelligence. What they're doing researching extraterrestrial craft is beyond me, but that's, that's where my checks came from, so I can only assume that uh, they were in charge of that. We came out, and I saw the disc in the hangar. Uh, upon seeing it, it, it struck me that, well, this explains all the UFO sightings. Not thinking that it was an extraterrestrial craft, that this must have been some advanced form of fighter that we've been working on for years, and, you know, people have just caught it being tested, so on and so forth. And uh, it never even occurred to me, even though I was looking at an extraterrestrial vehicle, that, you know, this wasn't man-made. For more on that, you'll have to join me in part three, where I'm going to go over the three major types of groups that believe in UFOs, as well as people who claim to be government and military whistleblowers. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw and you'd like to see more Armored Skeptic, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you absolutely love me, you can support me on Patreon. Or if you have a passing affection for me, you can buy my merch. Links are in the description.